Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakarov and together we look at designing datasets or customizing how your datasets look within DHIS2. All right, I'm here back with Georgi. Hey Georgi. Hi, hi Nick. Hey, and uh, let's look at today uh, designing data sets. So we've already created our data elements, we've put them in a data set, and now we're going to look at how the, the, the different ways we can design them to look at them. And there's two specific ways. One is section management, and the other one is, is more free design. So uh, let's just kind of skip through section management and see what that means. And then we will go into the actual yeah design a data entry form. But before we do that, let's have a look at what our data entry form looks like by default. So we've created one, it's called the monthly school visit, and it has a bunch of different data elements in it that have different category combinations. And let's see what that looks like here. Yeah, so we have the, the default section by default. They're uh, broken up into uh, sections of category combinations. So that's a section for gender category combination, a section for, section for type of training, a section for type, and type of facility. So uh, by default, it's not really beautiful, and the sections are named by the disaggregation, which you might not want your data entry person to see. Uh, now, if you like the way that this looks, but you just want to change the name of it, or you just want to take out a couple of things, for example, uh, you want to split up those gender questions, or split up the monthly school visit questions, then you can do uh, the section management, because what section management does is it's able to rename and or split up sections that have the that have the similar category combination. So let's look at what that looks like. So we'll go over to the data set. Um, this is in the data set app. We'll just left click and go to view sections. And then we're going to have to create a bunch because uh, they don't exist. So let's just create one and see what that looks like, which will be gender. Uh, and we'll add a new one and we'll just create a new section with just two of those um, and we'll call this um, let's say students student meals we'll call it and we'll just put in the student meals and the take-home rations and what we'll do is you can see these are all the data elements in this data set that have the same category combination which is the gender a disaggregation. So we'll choose those two, we'll click Save, and then we'll have a new section called Student Meals. Cool, so let's go back and, and refresh and see what that looks like on our data set. So we'll just be selecting the proper stuff again, and voila! So the good and the bad here is what we see right away. As soon as you create a single section, it supersedes any default. So um, that's what you see now. And it means that if we've forgotten to include any data elements from our data set in those sections, the data entry person won't be able to see them. Uh, we've only created one uh, incomplete data uh, section in this data set, which means now when the data entry person comes to this screen, they'll only be able to enter data for two data elements. Uh, so this is the, the, the issue and what you have to watch out for when you are designing a data entry form. But uh, it also means that our section now looks like student meals as opposed to gender, which is a kind of weird way. Um, and uh, you can continue going and, and, and this is how you all will create your sections. Uh, Georgie, do you want to mention anything else with the sections stuff that I may have missed or you want to add? Um, I would like to ask a question. So in a sense, if you would like to only break uh, the gender category combination, the gender section into what we just did uh, and keep everything else unchanged, it means that you have to create uh, sections, as many as you originally had, and include all the data elements uh, within those sections so to have them appear on the data entry form. So is That's that correct. right? Yeah, oh. that is correct. Yeah. Exactly. And the good, the good news, I mean, the, the problem is you have to do that. The good news is that you're able to change the names of your sections when you do that so that they are, appear a bit more friendly for the, for the entry person. Um, so now let's go back and look at what the more complicated uh, or free version. So what we'll do is we'll delete this one um, just because we don't want to get stuck uh, with 
the wrong thing. We'll go back to our data set and left click on it and we'll choose design data set, I believe it's called, design data entry form, there you go. And we'll just have a look at what this looks like. We're not gonna spend too much time because it's very free. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> free flowing. So what you see now is this is kind of a WYSIWYG, uh, what you see is what you get uh, screen, kind of like an old, um, an old website builder, you know, uh, before before there was Squarespace or anything yeah. else like that. And so uh, Georgie can click into that box and type anything he wants. He can format it. He can add tables if he likes. Uh, yeah. And we can do that as an example. Just add. Actually, a... people can think of it as a, as a word uh, file, so we can yeah, add, good point. Yeah, it's kind of like a word file. Table. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And you can just type in whatever you'd like. And then what you would do is you would grab a data element from that box on the side and pull it in, right? Yeah. Is that how you so do let's it? See. Yeah. So actually, you can build a form that you like. So uh, your data element will be what you name it. But actually, here you can grab the actual data element with the disaggregation and just pull it on the side. So actually, it, that's not correct. You click on where you would like this to go, and then you say insert. Okay. So there you go. Cool. So you can design it however you like, and yes. then you you leave the indicator where you want it to be, and then <laughs> you... So, so let's just see this process again, Georgie. It's not as, as important what we're writing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's, you select where you want it to go, then you go mm -hmm. over and you select the data element you want, and then you click insert. Cool. And what's most important to, to point out here is that when you create something like this, once again, it's gonna supersede anything else you've done before. If you've created sections, those will be superseded by this design form. Um, but the design form will not show up on mobile apps. Only sections or default data entry screens will show up on mobile apps. So that's one thing to, to point out. The other thing is that uh, if Georgie were to put in on that first row, on the second column, Georgie, if you put in another uh, data element, just a random one, what the user is going to see is an empty box. Because he's designing it himself, all the user will see now are three empty boxes on one column and then student enrolled in the middle row. So the, the user won't know what the box is related to. That's actually up to the designer in this case to make sure it's clear what this uh, empty box relates to. And it can be actually within a sentence. So you could say, he, and he used blank box uh, textbooks. And so it doesn't have to be in a table. It can be in a free-flowing sentence. But it really is important that you design it so that you, you let the data entry person know what they're entering. Otherwise, it's just random empty boxes, and it's much more potential for, for error in data entry. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Georgie? No, actually, that was a, quite a good uh, explanation. Cool. Uh, for, yeah. OK, so once we're done this, if we want, we can save or save and close. But we're not going to do that now, because this is just a, an example. But you can spend a lot of time here. Uh, playing around and, and adding things. So uh, I think that's good for now. We're going to wrap that video up. Thanks so much for watching and thank you, Georgie, for, for coming along. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 